Okay, we're back with part four of the data visualization in R series. This is Ryan Womack, data librarian at Rutgers University Libraries. And we are going to pick up with our slides. We left off with the pie chart and we're now moving into a little bit more of the historical context with William Cleveland on slide 33. And we're going to use that as a jumping off point into actual working with data visualization in R. So if you've been waiting for that step here, we're, we're just about to get there. So uh, let's talk about William Cleveland. So his works um, in the 1980s are, um, starting in the 80s, uh, are, have been very influential. And he wrote, in particular, the elements of graphing data and visualizing data. Um, by the way, the bibliography uh, that wasn't working in the previous uh, video, I did fix the availability of that file, so you should see that there. Uh, that does have a complete list of all the different works that I'm mentioning along the way in this tour. So um, you can get that information there. Um, Cleveland is known for promoting the dot plot in particular as an alternative that has some advantages over the typical bar chart and pie chart in terms of clarity and the things you can you can do with it. We're going to see that in just a second. Um, he also pioneered trellis graphics, which is an approach that parallels Edward Tufte's concept of the small multiple that lets you compare different um, data data sets side by side in multiple panels of data. We'll see that in action in the lattice package in R, which is an attempt to implement that approach. Uh, he actually made a number of recommendations on how to present your work on the page or on the screen. Uh, a lot of useful tips. Uh, I've kind of got a document that is an outline of, of that if you're looking for something that summarizes what's in much more detail in elements of graphing data. So you can take a look at that. But we are not going to go into um, extensive coverage of that here. I am just going to highlight a couple of the types of things that he's that he's talking about. He presents a lot of different techniques um, for presenting your data, um, how to label your data, how to deal with points that might overlap, uh, which might obscure some of the data. So you can do things like jitter, which is uh, m moving the points slightly away from their actual data, uh, what would be indicated by the data itself, so that they're visible as multiple individual points. Um, and Again, just in the interest of time, I'm not going to go through all of these, these, these tips, but just to give you an idea of the types of things that he does talk about. Like, for example, when you have uh, two things plotted against each other, you want to adjust your scales in some way so that you're uh, near a 45 degree angle um, of the relationship between that, that data. If it's too steep or too s flat, uh, you're, you don't perceive the differences quite as well as a nice uh, mid-range 45 degree line. Okay, so Cleveland is the, the person behind a lot of these concepts and we are now going to go into R and look at some actual practice. And so the lattice package in, in this uh, workshop we're going to be using RStudio and so however you'd like to get that on your system, you can go to rstudio.org and download a version um, and install it. Again, uh, if you want to pause and take a moment and go get set up, make sure you've got rstudio running. Make sure you have Lattice installed. So again, I'm assume, assuming that you know your way around R, but if you need to install a package, you just to install packages lattice uh, dependencies equals true and that would
pull in the lattice package into your R environment. Um, all of the packages that we are going to be using here are included or mentioned in the R file. Um, and let me just pull it up. Uh, you can download that from the GitHub site. You can uh, grab it and put it on your system somewhere you can find it and then open it up in RStudio or your preferred R environment if you have some other uh, thing you want to use. So we are at section one and the installing packages section kind of outlines the things that you would need to use um, for this session. And so uh, I've, in, I've highlighted the major packages. Those typically will bring in the different dependent packages that are required. Uh, but just in case they don't, I've kind of I've outlined them with uh, a comment sim symbol that comments that code out. So that's not going to run if you just select it and run. But if you did find, uh, for whatever reason, you needed to make sure your hex bin package was installed, you could uncomment the line and make sure that package gets put in. Um, this R file has everything that my system needs to work. I can't really guarantee that everyone's setup will be the same. So part of getting things to work might be tinkering with that a bit. So section one has all those packages and some of the more complex packages or installations that come later. I'm going to mention a little bit more about them in those parts. But right now we really want to focus on Lattice. So we're, we go to section two in the code and we can load Lattice. And we are going to be using ggplot as well. So, And we're going to be using data from the ggplot2 package. So just to do that all at once, you can highlight. And in, in our studio, you can hit Control-Enter to run the selection of of code or you can um, use the the menus to run the lines. I just typically I'm going to select a chunk and hit control enter. And so again if you're not familiar with the RStudio environment just real quick uh, the saved code file is up at the top left. The bottom left at least on my screen again these things are all customizable so you could move it around on your own screen. The bottom left has the con what's called the console where we can either manually type commands um, such as ls to list what's in the workspace um, or we the output of commands that we highlight and run will appear there anything that appears in text form will show up there we can also enlarge or contract any portion of the screen if we need to take a closer look and on the right hand side we have one window that is going to give us uh, some various outputs such as here the help file for our diamonds data set. Uh, it will also give us images when we're ready to graph things and the top right is a navigation window that lets us see the different objects in the workspace. So we have diamonds uh, that is the data set that we've loaded. So this is a standard data set that's included with ggplot2. Uh, it's used in a lot of the ggplot examples, including my intro to R workshops. But just to review, this data set of diamonds is 50,000 characteristics of, of 50,000 different diamonds, the price and the four C's of diamonds, the carrot, cut, color, and clarity, along with a few other me measurements that we will mostly stay away from from we might use a little bit. Okay so we want to just kind of jump in and see Lattice, how it works and what we're going to get out of it. Um, and in the slides there is, I've, I've mentioned if you need to pause and go back and kind of review navigating around R if that's what you want to learn uh, I have a slide there that has many different um, um, 
packages that, that are useful for that. Uh, you can try out things right now or, or take a look at that. All right, so we've loaded the data. Uh, if we want to go to this section 2.2 and plot the data, the first thing we can do is just a standard scatter plot, right? Uh, again, we want to explore our data, and you explore the data by starting with the basics. So we're ju we just run a command called xyplot, and we're plotting price versus caret. Uh, in this notation that is price tilde caret price I, I always see, see the tilde as meaning as a function of so if I think of this as price as a function of caret I get a mental image of price on the y-axis and caret on the x-axis and so you can see we've got a lot of points uh, we have these sort of banding effects at what are basically the the major weight points for a diamond. So the diamond tends to be cut to be at least a carat. If it's 0.99 carats, it's much less desirable than if it's actually a full carat diamond. So even if the the cutting process makes it slightly imperfect, they might they tend to round up to these. So one, one and a half carats, one and a quarter carats, you can see that on on the image. We also have a lot of small diamonds. We've got a lot of points that are overplotted. We can't really tell how many are down in these areas. And we're going to see a way to deal with that a little bit later. But just keep that in mind. OK, so we can also do things like check the validity of our data uh, via visualization. And in the second line, what I'm doing is multiplying the physical length, height, and width of the diamond, x, y, and z, and plotting that against the carat weight. Now, we would expect most diamonds to have a pretty similar density, and that this would be mostly a straight line, which it mostly is. But we see there are a lot of zeros there. Okay, so probably we've got some missing observations for length, height, and width that are recorded as a zero. We've got only a couple, but but one of these is way out here as a, a very high outlier, probably some typo there either in the in the, in one of those X, Y, and Z measurements. Uh, so that would be a way we could look at the data, maybe clean it up a little bit. And another thing to notice about R is that this is a computation, right, on the 50,000 points to multiply X times Y times Z. And R just does that as part of the uh, inside another command. We don't have to do anything special to take care of that. And that's a nice feature. All right, so now th that's all just standard scatter plotting. And the third line in section 2.2 .2 is when we hit the magic of, of lattice. So what we've done is we've taken plotting price versus caret and we just put a little vertical bar uh, and after that clarity so what that means is we take our plot of price versus carrot and break it into separate categories f by the clarity ratings now there are eight clarity ratings for the diamonds with IF being the best at internally flawless and I1 being the lowest level and so rather effortlessly just with one little tweak we now have a panel display and the this is the concept of the small multiple where each of these panels is set up in exactly the same way with the exact same scale and so we can very easily get a sense of how these relationships compare right we can see that there is a much flatter curve for the low quality diamonds um, they, they don't rise in price very steeply. The IF diamonds rise very steeply, but there are not that many of them um, at the higher weights. We have a lot more um, high weight diamonds of two carats and up that have, you know, some flaws in the, in the diamond itself, in the clarity. So you can get a sense of those trade-offs. You can kind of perceive a lot of things at once. And this is the the small multiple. 
So the thing about the lattice package is that most of these commands work the same as base R graphics commands, if you're familiar with those. And we can then easily add this categorical display or the small multiple display uh, to anything, really. So section 2.3 does that for a bar chart. We uh, want to look at the cut of the diamond. Now the cut of the diamond, there are five ratings, and those are text ratings, right? So in order to plot them, we have to count them up first. So one little thing to notice in line 99 here is that um, the what we've done is we have inserted a command to create a table. Table cut, if we just type that as a text command down in the bottom left, um, that creates a textual uh, table that counts up the, those ratings. But we can stick that in another command and we get a bar chart that, that plots those quantities as a bar. Um, all of these commands in R have options that let us uh, adjust the display. So we can put horizontal equals false and change it from a vertical to, sorry, a horizontal to a vertical bar chart. And later we're going to see how to add titles and change the colors and do things like that as well. So that's coming. Uh, don't worry about that. Uh, but the third line in 2.3 shows us a, another thing we can do, which is to um, use side-by-side -side bars to plot the different categories. And in this case, we are plotting the, uh, the cut rating and the eight different levels of clarity at the same time. And we can actually see that um, there are very different patterns of distribution of the cuts uh, depending on which uh, clarity of diamond we we're looking at. Also, the numbers involved are very different. There's very few of the of the worst and the best clarity diamonds. Most of those are in the middle, um, and they tend to be sort of in the lower range. Okay, so just continuing with lattice, we're going to kind of really run through the characteristics of lattice here. And we're looking at groups. So if we plot with the option groups, so we can say groups equals cut if we want to group the data by the cut rating. And essentially what this is going to do is create different colored points for each of the five cuts. And in this graph it is difficult to see if there's really a pattern there. Uh, there's a lot of overplotting. The yellow dots were plotted at the very end, so they lay on top and kind of obscure a lot of what's going on there. It's hard to really see a pattern just from visually looking at this, but it is possible, right? It's possible just to throw in a, an option command and add this extra dimension to the data. Uh, further illustrating, we can do other things like create small multiples of two dimensions at once. So if I, instead of just one variable after the vertical bar, I add cut plus clarity, I can, uh, Lattice will automatically generate every combination of cut and clarity. And this can be, uh, already we've got maybe too many things to really display very effectively on screen here, but these graphics will scale up if you've got a big monitor um, and, and you can stretch it out. They will automatically resize and scale and you, you can detect some patterns. So here we have uh, only a handful of observations really for the worst ratings. I I'm sorry, the combination of the best clarity, internally flawless, and the worst cut. So there's just a few of those sort of oddball diamonds. Um, we've got IF and IDEAL being the, the best uh, combination, really, of the best clarity and the best cut. And we can see that that's a steeper relationship than many of the other panels. But we can also get a sense of you know, maybe there's something weird going on in 
in one of these groups and we could quickly eyeball a lot of possibilities and, and, and pull that out. The point is that having this syntax in Lattice makes it easy. Just knock yourself out, explore whatever combinations uh, you think might be relevant. And the final line in section 2.4 allows you, you, you can keep layering these concepts together. So if we want to have both the colored points, which is the groups option, and a faceted graph with small multiples, we can do both. We can do a vertical bar, vertical bar cut, and then groups equals clarity. And in this example, I've also uh, used a little feature to generate a key for the data. In this, so in this case, we have the eight clarity ratings are colored as dots, different colored dots, and the five cut ratings are the five different panels. Um, again, it's maybe hard to see patterns, but uh, we can see that the sort of low end of most of these these panels in terms of prices are the blue, the um, the I1 low clarity diamonds. That's the pale blue, which is not that distinct really from the dark blue uh, in this scale. We'll also see later how to adjust the color scale. So part of the of what we'll be showing is some ways to tweak your graphs and make them um, a little more customizable. All right, so I just want to check my slides for a second uh, to see where, yeah, we're, we, we're, we're staying away from the slides for most of the rest of this particular video and just working in our studio. So section 2.5, an important thing to note about lattice graphics in R, which is different than base graphics, and it's also, this is also a feature of ggplot, two uh, is that you can store a graphical object. So rather than display it to the screen, uh, what I've done here is use my assignment operator, this little arrow type symbol that's created by typing a less than and then a hyphen. And I can assign it a name. I'm just calling it diamond graph. And rather than plot anything to the screen, it just stores it in the system. And if I list my files, uh, you can see I now have an object in my workspace called Diamond Graph. And I can pull it up just by typing Diamond Graph. And here it is. So this, in this case, this is just the five panel uh, scatter plot by cut. Now the thing about a stored object is you can modify it quickly without having to redo the whole uh, environment. So I can use the update command and do things like change the layout or even change the type of display from a scatter plot to, in this case, a bar chart, which doesn't make a lot of sense for this data, but just to show you that strange things are possible. Uh, and we can do things like change the color. Notice that every time I do an update, uh, what happens is it goes back to the original base graph, which was the five scatter plot panels with the default colors and default layout, like that. And the update uses this as a base and then makes whatever modifications you'd like. Uh, if you think about applications for that, you might have a, an, an environment where you've got some graphs stored but you let a user uh, specify their preferences, like they might have a preferred color that they like to see things in, and you could accommodate that preference by just running one of these commands. Um, so it makes it more flexible. All right, so we have a few more things I want to show you in Lattice. Uh, one of these is the concept of the sh what's called the shingle, and one of these days I should look up where that terminology comes from, but unfortunately I don't have any anecdote about that. Uh, in section 2.6 what we do is we create an object that's called a shingle uh, just like the shingles on a house. Uh, these are sort of overlapping, slightly overlapping uh, 
groups that that cover the data set but what's interesting here is that these are created from the data itself so we run a command that creates five bins the number equals five and of equal count right so we want to create our own five categories of these diamonds by price based on price so we have and actually if we look at this object in R by just typing the variable name we can see uh, it actually starts to print out the observations the values of the pr those prices for the different objects until it runs out of room it's not going to want to plot more than or print more than 10,000 items uh, but then it shows us these are the intervals right so it, it creates roughly equal numbers and it shows us that between 325 and 837 dollars uh, in price are the lowest fifth of the diamonds um, and then these middle ranges up to the top fifth of diamonds is everything over sixty three hundred dollars in price up to about eighteen over eighteen thousand and the algorithm sort of you know does that for you uh, so you you're actually visualizing the data based on its own internal characteristics right and so then we can plot based on this um, in this case I'm plotting the since we already are creating categories based on price I no longer want to plot price versus carrot I'm plotting the the depth just to see if there's any relationship the depth of the diamond uh, versus the carrot weight and I don't see really terribly strong patterns here except that of course the high price diamonds do have a lot more heavy weight uh, diamonds of two or more carats um, and I still see that banding effect um, and the third line in section 2.6 let's look at that uh, in this case we use a command called uh, strip and the strip um, actually lets us insert I don't know if this is going to be too small on many of your screens but the the line above the the plot has numbers on it and that's actually the the price range so we have the high price diamonds from 6300 and up uh, the low price diamonds from 325 to 837 and so on and we've actually you know once again peeked into the data let it self-organize itself and break itself into categories according to our instructions and we're even labeling the graph based on those internal categories so that just that whole concept is somewhat interesting um, that we don't have to know everything in advance uh, we can explore the data more interactively this way all right so um, anytime you need to take a break in these videos and review something just pause and try it again and um, that's what having a video version is for but let me let me keep going and we'll look at section 2.7 I promised you that I would show you how to actually tweak your graphs and, and add other options and that's examples of that are here in section 2.7 so we have a uh, labeled graph that has a title and x and y axis labels and we've actually messed with the um, axes a bit to have a uh, have prices in two thousand dollar increments um, and we've adjusted the points so that they're little crosses right we've, and we've changed the color of the points slightly so this these are all things that you can do uh, in lattice very straightforward you just simply start listing all of these options out as as extra options and the documentation of the lattice package will have instructions on which of those things you can actually actually use uh, I should also mention at this point that there's a book on lattice that's listed in your bibliography uh, by the creator of lattice so just look for that lattice book and that also has a lot of detail about how lattice works uh, one final thing is lattice has this system where uh, 
there are default views of the data but you can also specify the type of graph and in the last line in section 2.7 you'll see we do an XY plot and we've specified two types there's a P and an R. Now the P is asking Lattice to plot points. The R, if you just run that by itself, you'll see it is the regression line through the points. Um, now unfortunately both of those start out in this default um, blue color and it's pretty difficult to actually see the regression line except where it enters and emerges from the cloud of points. Um, but we'll, we'll see how to modify that in just a second. Okay. Um, I'm going to actually skip here to section 2.8 because I'll show you how to modify that first and then we'll go back and look at these final two lattice commands SPLOM and parallel plot um, before ending this section of the video. Alright, so lattice has many modifiable settings. If you type show settings you'll see all of the things that you can work on and you'll see the default settings presented. So we were seeing these pale blue bars, right, because that is the default color. Um, and we were seeing darker blue scatter plots because that is the dark, the default color. However, all these things are modifiable. And you can do a modification by uh, pulling the trellis parameters out. Um, and I'm not really going to explain a lot of detail about this, but I am going to just run the commands and show you. In this case, what we're going to just going to do one thing. We are going to change the color of that regression line. So the colors command will let you see all of the colors that are available to you in the R workspace. And if, actually, if you Google a bit, you will see some um, sites that have you know a on-screen color palette for you to choose from. Um, I'll try to insert that into the notes at some point, the actual link. And you can then choose one of these colors and insert it back into the parameters. So I'm going to pull out the parameters for the line by saying trellis par get and then plot line. So you, again you have to look in the documentation and, and realize the names of many of these things that can be set and so this is plot line. Um, if I type my theme right now I can see these are the um, the parameters that I pulled out. So the color, the, the code is actually a hexadecimal code for the default color. I can adjust the line types and widths as well. Um, Again, if you want to, you can knock yourself out and get into, de into details. Right now, I'm just going to uh, overwrite this color with the color tomato by saying my theme dollar sign color equals tomato. And then I'm going to set the parameter by sort of injecting it back in with the trellis par set command and saying, okay, overwrite the, the plot line with my theme. And now, once I've done that, you'll see that if we if we run the same uh, plot command, and it's a little it's still quite a thin line on my screen here, so it's it may be a little hard to see on the video, but the the line is now a tomato red, and it's slightly more visible as it goes through those points. Um, if I again just want to see the regression line and take the p out. Um, I can see, okay, yes, it's a it's a red line. Okay, so what we've seen with Lattice is we've seen this ability to really facet the uh, the data. Sort of the extreme example of that is a command called SPLOM, that's for a scatter plot matrix. And a scatter plot matrix will take every possible combination of the variables in a particular data set or matrix subset of a data set and plot them against each other. So this obviously, even this is only 10 variables, uh, gets complex fast, uh, not suitable for all occasions, but again, when you're exploring your data, you might just want to run this. Um, I'm not going to run it live because even on this data set of 50,000, it takes a little bit of time for it to crank through 
uh, uh, well, I say I'm not going to run it live. Let me run it live and see if um, it's done by the time I uh, wrap up the video. So if you run it live, try it out yourself. It'll be a good test of how fast your computer is. And it, you'll see it start to fill in box by box. Um, so I've saved a version of that for you to look at. And you can see we've got the um, color groups that are used here to highlight any particular patterns. And, you know, again, you could just use this to see if any of those variable combinations jumped out at you as something interesting to explore. Uh, we can see the slanting, sloping relationship of price versus carrot. Um, and then we can see some of these other things also have relationships like carrot versus the, the x dimension of the diamond is a kind of a curved slope and you know you you it it could be suggestive it all i'm saying is that this is a useful tool to explore your data with and look at all possible combinations uh, you can see my r studio it's managed to get through one row of that data right now while i while i've been talking uh, a second exploratory tool that can be used to look at a, a, a whole set of your data that runs in the lattice environment is the parallel plot and the slides have an example of the the parallel plot this one will run a little bit faster than the others um, but still I'm not going to run it live um, the parallel plot lines up each of the variables and then I've asked it to color in this case color the data by clarity so I can see potential patterns if let's say all of the high clarity diamonds have tend to group in a certain place uh, on a scale and what's interesting here is that well perhaps they they don't exactly they're not that many strong patterns although we do see this sort of blue group of the X dimension uh, maybe that's associated with clarity here the purple which is the sort of lower end clarity has a very high X dimension at least for some subset of those points. Again, you may or may not find something suggestive when you do this, but it is a tool that you can throw at a, a large mass of data and potentially discover something about the relationships. So the, the parallel plot is just tracing the relationship of one characteristic against each of the other variables in the data set. And so that's why when, it, when we get to clarity, obviously all of the low clarity diamonds have the same clarity color code so that that's why they uh, separate at this particular uh, column but then start to change as you go through uh, but the thing about that command is it operates in the lattice context so we can use the, the options that we've learned before like groups and other lattice uh, settings and terminology to work with it Okay, so we've seen this R implementation of Lattice, and again, the point is that we can easily do small multiple comparisons by categories of data, and we have a lot of flexibility in terms of the way we get in and explore our data. And I, I, I like to talk about Lattice also just because it's one of the very popular graphics packages in R, and it's good to know about. So I think this is a good place to stop this segment and we are going to come back with ggplot2 and the concept of the grammar of graphics in the next part. So see you then.